Hi readers, it's Lori. Welcome back to my channel and welcome today to a most anticipated reads list for July. And this one is just about nonfiction. So you may be wondering why, why are you not bringing fictional titles forward? You may be thinking, this is not the video from me. I don't care about nonfiction. If both of those are true for you, then stay tuned because there will be a fictional list of <laughs> anticipated reads for July, but it is so long and I, I, that I decided to make this into two videos. Here's why I think the fictional list is so long. I think because I am on a no buy challenge, I felt a little bit more liberated to bring a number of, more of them through. And also maybe just because I feel like it, it's summer and I don't know, I started researching, I started looking and there were a few that I could say, yeah, no, I don't want to talk about that one. So this is a longer anticipated reads list. I know a lot of content creators do a longer anticipated reads list than I do. But in this case, I'm going to split them apart. And so today I'm going to bring forward six books that are nonfiction that are coming out in July. Now, I have noticed that there's a pattern here sometimes, and that's fine. It is absolutely fine, but I'm, I'm noticing it. And that is that a lot of people who watch my videos, if I talk about a book that has a political connection, I often get a thumbs down and I get it. A lot of people don't like to talk about that. A lot of people don't want to hear about books about that. There are two on this list, so I will say that. But you can fast forward through. And you have the right to not like them. That's fine. I don't have any problem with that. They're, you're not always going to 100% love everything that I put out, and that's okay, and that's reality. But in this case, I want you to know that there are a couple. So to warn you, the first one is one of those. And it just may not be your thing. This whole video it may not be your thing. So I'm not encouraging not to watch, but I'm just saying I understand if you don't. Does that make sense? <laughs> That's a lot. That's a big caveat. Anyway, when I was looking at the list of nonfiction titles that were coming out in the month of July, to me, there were just these six really stood out. And I just think that they're kind of interesting. You know, I use that word a lot. Interesting, curious, um, intrigued. Those are the things that I'm feeling about these books. So let's get started with the first one that you may not like. So again, feel free to fast forward ahead. This one is called The Presidents and the People, Five Leaders Who Threatened Democracy and the Citizens Who Fought to Defend It. And this one is history, not current events. So that's important for you to know. These are about presidents from back in the day and the things that they did or wanted to do that they were not necessarily able to achieve. But here we go. We will start with John Adams. John Adams did not like the national press. He did not like the press he was getting. <laughs> and so he fought to make sure that they were silenced and prosecuted for the criticism that they <laughs> brought forward against poor John. President Adams was not happy with that. And so he tried really, really hard to, to stop them to stop them from talking and criticizing him. And he was not successful. The next one is James Buchanan, who got into it with the Supreme Court, but also with a number of American citizens because he tried to deny the constitutional rights to African-Americans, which had been given to them at that time. Now, they didn't have a lot of rights, but Buchanan thought they had too many. So he got really, really upset and really got into it with the Supreme Court to try to overturn some of those things. In a similar situation, Andrew Johnson, who was president, as you might remember, after Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, Andrew Johnson was really challenged by the divisiveness between, still, between the North and the South and between, you know, people who were in favor of African-American freedom from slavery and people who were absolutely not. And it was very divisive. And instead of taking the stand like Abraham Lincoln did uh, against slavery and, and, and for giving them back their rights to humanhood and to freedom, Andrew Johnson got a lot of pushback from the folks in the South and Andrew Johnson could not hold up to that. And so he really started to cave around that. And he urged 
violence against his political opponents, even though he did it in secret. So he, he sort of created a number of things that shouldn't have happened because he was supportive of and listening to white supremacists at that time. Then Woodrow Wilson, if you remember in the 1910s, in that uh, decade, Woodrow Wilson modernized and polarized and nationalized Jim Crow laws. And so this too had a resulting effect on African-Americans who were being beaten, who were uh, just terrible things were occurring. And he was in support of those laws and wanted them to stay on the books forever. And then we remember in the 1970s, Richard Nixon began to uh, really try to attack the other political party in different ways. And he created a, what is known as the Watergate scandal and committed criminal acts, which indeed resulted in his resignation because he was being, he, those, those tapes were uncovered and he was going to be impeached most likely. So these men tried to destroy democracy in a number of different ways because they were fighting and railing against what was put in place uh, by the by the laws and by the constitution. So to me, that's incredibly interesting and I would like to know more about these presidents. So this comes out again on July 2nd and this author, Corey Brett Schneider, has written a number of books that are connected to history and to processes that you might find interesting. So that is somebody for you to check out. Then the second one, which this is going to be it for you for political like nonfiction. This one is called Black Pill and it is by Ellie Reeve and its subtitle is How I Witnessed the Darkest Corners of the Internet Come to Life, Poison Society and Capture American Politics. This one is centered around the January 6th insurrection and how this began to unfold internally using the internet and how these groups of people who were connected into these these secret places that they were able to talk about this and to plan all of this and how it then was able to be executed as a result. So she looks at political violence. She looks at interviews with a number of groups on both sides. She looks at some documents that were hidden. There's a lot of things that she presents in order to understand how dark this time in our history be became and how it sort of began and how it created the consequences that we're still in the midst of today. I don't know if this is bent one way or another. I would hope that this is just factual because she is a correspondent, but a lot of people look at correspondents and journalists at this time and they look at who they work for and they you know, they, they think that those journalists are really very biased because they work for this group or that group or this news broadcasting system or this news broadcasting system. So I understand that a lot of people have very strong opinions about this. For me, I'm interested in understanding kind of what was happening. I know a little bit about it, but I don't know a lot about it. And I think there's a lot that we still don't know. So Ellie Reeve um, has won a number of awards. She's won a, an Emmy and a Peabody. And so I hope that this is a good one and not too terribly long. It's 304 pages. The next one comes out on July 16th and it's called The Genius of Judy, How Judy Bloom Rewrote Childhood for All of Us. And this is by Rachel Bergstein. And <laughs> uh, Judy Bloom's body of work is still very controversial to this day as it no doubt was when it was released and a number of people have banned these books in their communities and so judy bloom continues to come to the forefront more often than not uh, even though she started writing these books decades ago she sold tens of millions of copies of her book one of the most famous i would say is are you there god it's me margaret she also wrote a book called blubber but what she did was she her roots with her mother and where she was raised and her experiences her thoughts her noticings about as she was growing up she thought that there needed to be a place for young girls to read about other young girls who were experiencing similar challenges and situations like being uh, proud of themselves and their body, having safe and, and careful relationships, 
she did talk about sex in some of her books, which of course is one of the big controversies around whether or not Judy Bloom should be available to all girls. But un- unabashedly, she really took subjects that were important and that girls were talking about and thinking about and worrying about. And she put them into the pages of novels that really helped girls to feel connected, cared for, and strong and 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 autonomous in many many ways so i think this is a great read for those of you who like judy bloom this one might also be controversial for some of you but i agree that you have your right to feel the way that you feel about these books but i for one really loved them pressed them into the hands of my girls and uh, have now pressed them into the hands of uh, granddaughters so there you go all right you know i love some crime <laughs> And some underworld. So this one is The Incorruptibles by Dan Slater, a true story of kingpins, crime busters, and the birth of the American underworld. This one comes out in on July 16th. And this is <laughs> something else. A harrowing tale of early 20th century New York, which is one of my favorite places. It talks about the immigrant underworld, secret vice squads, and the rise of organized crime. And there are a few things I like more than books about organized crime. And I don't know that I've talked about that as much as I've talked about how I love books about serial killers and about... <laughs> you know, creepy, horrible things that happen in the night. This one is about the Lower East Side and how um, that space in New York was born and how it um, attracted a certain number of people that were immigrants coming into the city and they were trying to settle and be, you know, be successful. And what happened? How did this occur? And when, when did the casinos and the prostitute rings and the other things that occurred in that time frame. What happened? How did that occur? And how did they kind of get past it? And have they gotten past it? It is 432 pages. It's published by Little Brown and Company, but it's a bigger one. And Dan Slater also wrote The Wolf Boys, which I've heard of, but never read. So you may have also read something else by Dan Slater, but yeah, I like it. I like it. Okay. Another one that comes out on the 16th is Sharks Don't Sink. So now for something completely different. (laughs) This is by Jasmine Graham, and it is a biography memoir. And she is a person who is, she's a young Black scientist, which I really appreciate. And she was inspired to understand more about sharks and thinks of them as a misunderstood animal. And so she, she set out to look at how she could encapsulate and learn more about sharks so that others could learn more about them too. Sharks have been around for 400 million years. And if you've watched the news anytime lately, back to uh, a state that I'm going to talk about in a minute, you'll know that there are a number of sharks now that are really wildly prevalent in vacation waters where people are going to swim with their families or boating with their families. And so how do sharks stay afloat? because they are denser than water. So they shouldn't necessarily be able to float in the way that they do. So there's, that's one question she looks at. She joined three other black women to form the minorities in shark sciences, which is actually called MISS for short. She's an independent researcher. Uh, She calls herself a rogue shark scientist. And I just think that this is entertaining. And my family and I have, uh, often talked about sharks. We are somewhat fascinated by them. My youngest daughter in particular is fascinated by sharks. And so this one I think is one that I want to grab as well. And this one is 224 pages. And again, it comes out on July 16th. And I love this cover too. And I love that her photo is on this cover. And the last one is maybe the most delightful to me. (laughs) And I didn't save it for last. It's last because it doesn't come out until the 23rd of July. So this is a later release in the month of July. And it is called, wait for it, Guilty Creatures, Sex, God, and Murder in Tallahassee, Florida. And it's by Makita Brotman. Okay. You may have heard about this case, but I honestly don't think I did. I, If I did, I don't really remember it. Now, Does this case sound like other similar cases? Maybe one that's actually recently been (laughs) 
tried or is being tried and there were some results about one of the people involved in this case, yes, this one is not unheard of for sure, but it's being dubbed as a breathless, breathless true crime tale of sex, religion, and murder in the Deep South. I, I'm I'm all in. Mike and Denise Williams, lovely family, great Baptists involved in their churches and their neighborhoods, good people, hardworking, best friends with Brian and Kathy Winchester for since childhood. So they also hardworking Southern Baptists know each other so well, been together forever, living nearby. Everything is ironclad and amazing in their relationships with each other and their families until one day, Mike disappears while he's duck hunting on Lake Seminole and they never find Mike's body. So the assumption is that Mike was eaten by alligators because there are a number of alligators in Lake Seminole. So that just made sense to a lot of people. Except five years later, Brian Winchester divorces his wife and marries Denise, who, if you remember, was Mike's wife. So suddenly there's a bit of a scandal and people start talking. What? How could this happen? They were such great couples and, you know, Mike died. We don't know what happened to him. Then people started wondering how long they had been connected to each other. Was this just a relationship scam that they were um, sleeping with each other and, and doing things under the, under the blankets for a very long time? And then did they have something to do with Mike's death? And so it took another 12 years for this to be resolved and to figure out what happened. And the synopsis says that when it did come out, it was unimaginable. So this is going to be a great read, I think. And again, it does remind you, if you think about it, of other cases, there's no question. There are other people who have been in a similar situation. So this should be a cautionary tale for any folks who are looking at their neighbors or their best friends in a different way. You know, it doesn't usually end well, but nevertheless, I really am excited about this one. It is 288 pages, so I have a feeling it will be a super quick read. I hope my library gets it. I think I'm going to put in a early sort of request for them to take a look at this one and see if it's something they want to add to the shelves. And this one is published by Simon & Schuster. I haven't mentioned the publishers of all of these, but it should be one that is easily available. And so hopefully you have found a few of these that delight you as much as they delight me. And if you are planning to take a look at these, let me know in the comments below which ones really are sparking your interest. And feel free to tell me which ones you're not interested in reading at all. I'm always glad to see that you're able to express yourself freely here with me and that we have that kind of a connection with each other because not every book is going to be my cup of tea and not every book is going to be your cup of tea either. So thanks for watching today. Stay tuned for the next video, which is the fiction most anticipated reads. And as always, happy reading. Bye. listening to it too but again that cover like the cover the story the setting I lived in Florida not in Tallahassee but I lived in Florida for a bit of time in my life and I feel like it might be really great